<laughs> Hi guys. Uh, greetings as always, guys. It's Mount Vernon Kid here, back again to bring you another comic review uh, for the books that came out for the last final week of October. Uh, it's great to be back as always, once again. Um, and if I reiterate a lot of stuff that I've been saying, uh, I don't mean it out of just to keep repeating, but I think I, I do it to make sure people understand because I know most people tend to know that I, I do, you know, my pull is really thick, thick and heavy at times so that you need to understand. Five months have passed, guys, five months now, almost six months. Uh, but before then, I was, I had a hiatus from reviewing because I was, there was some personal that was going on in my life that needed my assistance. Uh, so I had to uh, pretty much not, got to cut back on the comics. Uh, but I had a good friend, Lou Goblin. He was uh, helping me, you know, especially with the codes, uh, with Marvel books, keeping up what's going on with Marvel. I was able to keep up with, with some books for DC, not everything, but some, thanks to other friends that, you know, let me borrow. Uh, and a lot of some, and a lot of image, uh, you know, a lot of uh, indie books as well. Some, but not a lot. Um, but once again, like I said, it's good to be back. Um, and uh, let's get into it. Let's, let's talk about the books that I got this week. First of all, let's, let's talk about one book you won't see on this list. You won't see on this uh, review, and that's uh, Image with uh, Greg Roca, Nicola Nicola Scott, Black Magic. You won't hear me review this book on this review. Check out my next comic pull spotlight, uh, where I put the spotlight on this bad boy right here and talked about it. I, I did enjoy it. Uh, I recommend it to anybody. Okay, so yeah, uh, but I got a good enough books to talk about. Yeah, there we go. Let's get right into it, shall we? Um, so got some Marvel, got some DC, and got some indie. Let's kick it off with Marvel, and we're gonna start this off with Angela, Queen of Hell, number one. All right, beginning once again. Miss Marjorie Bennett, no relation to me. Uh, both our names are Bennett, but she's no relation to me. Um, is clearly starting to become one of those my favorite writers who don't have a Y chromosome. Now she carries the reign of Angela by herself, which I like. I'm like, yeah, give it to her. And in this, it picks up six, you know, eight months after what's been going on with with uh, Angela. And she is in hell, basically, the end of the world, uh, looking for uh, Sierra, her friend. Um, we found out, of course, you probably know that the Sierra that we she thought was Sierra was not her. And um, pretty much she is fighting through the hells to get to her. Um, it shows the present and then it shows the past. In the present, we get to see that Angela is truly what she is right here. She is... Um, Pretty much leading or ruling over hell. So she's taking the throne from her uh, her niece. Yeah, her niece, Hela. Because Hela is Loki's daughter. Loki and Thor are uh, Angela's uh, brother brothers. But um, I was very impressed. It was still good. Uh, got more backstory into the relationship between uh, Sierra and uh, Angela, which was good. Um, the artwork was it was good, and Miss Marjorie Bennett's writing just really captured the essence of Angela, especially Angela now, especially that she's been she transferred over here to to Marvel now. Uh, but this was really good, very much indeed. Uh, enjoyed it, uh, Angela, Queen of Hell, number one. The ending, I'm not going to ruin. It was, I was, whoa, okay. Next up. Sam Wilson, uh, Captain America, number two. Nick Spencer, Daniel Kuhnla. Um, 
Look, um, Mr. Spencer, Marvel, or whoever is, is making the call in the shots here, look, I'm not a big fan of what you are trying to do between Steve and Nick. Steve and uh, Sam, I say Nick. Um, it, would, it would seem that you're, you are trying to break up the friendship that they've had for so many years and you even call it out on in this book, which I was a little bit, I was very, I was hurt. Like, I can't see Sam and Steve breaking up, even if they don't agree, they don't have the same agreement in terms of their position. And once again, this book is continued to play on that of Steve Rogers as Cap had his way, Sam Wilson as Cap as his way, and there's almost like a, like a, not a, a point of looking down the line and you just say, they're still going to be friends now. It's almost like Sam even says it, my former best friend. I'm like, really? But there's a lot of stuff that Sam has to deal with in this, you know, certain things, which I'm not going to spoil. Though there are some things I don't like about it, there are some things, there are um, more things that were actually, I was enjoyed about it. Um, but still, I'm not feeling the fact that you guys are trying to break up Cap, Steve, and uh, uh, Sam. New Avengers uh, number two. Meet the Maker. All right. The team is still dealing with evil Reed Richards changing people into these diamond head freaks. Um, the biggest moment I can say in this is putting the spotlight pretty much on Songbird, Melissa Gold. She, Melissa Gold really shines in this issue, just showcasing what this woman can do and why she has always, always been destined to be an Avenger and not just a part of the Thunderbolts or something like that. Um, that was the biggest thing. Um, another good key moment part in this is seeing the combination of the the combination of white tiger and squirrel girl which was pretty interesting but it was a straightforward issue nothing really fancy nothing really special ewan is trying his best i still am not fully behind uh, uh sandova's artwork i don't like the anime-ish look and i am an anime fan i love anime but this anime looks i'm not really feeling uh, that's just me. All right. Let's move on to Spider-Man 2099, number two, Peter David. Yeah. Without spoiling too much in this, something tragic happens to Miles and someone that he cared about. Um, when I say Miles, I mean Miguel and someone he cared about. And this is almost like the jumping on point for why Miguel jumped back into the costume. We actually get to see him in the new costume and he's tracking down the person responsible. Uh, does he find him? I'm not going to ruin that. Peter David still knows how to write this bad boy. This is his creation. Spider-Man 2009 is his creation. It's his baby. And um, like I said, Snyley's uh, artwork is great as well. But uh, interesting, 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 interesting. And I'm sorry about that, guys. I just had a very bad irritation uh, on my foot. <laughs> All right, so let's go to DC, shall we? And if you wonder, well, I'm actually sitting on a sitting on something, but uh, I'm not in my chair, rather. So I'm gonna sit down a little lower uh, today. Um, 
but yeah, I'm just sitting on I'm sitting on several pillows of mine uh, with my Iron Fist T-shirt. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to DC, and we're gonna start this off with Batman and Robin number uh, Batman and Robin Eternal number four, the weekly series once again. Uh, Tillin in the fourth, Schneider, Orlando, uh, Scott Eaton does the cover artwork, I think. I believe. Basically, Dick has come into contact with Bruce. Now, remember, Bruce is, now you gotta remember that, I'm still catching up on Batman, but Bruce is, you know, he lost his memory, he doesn't, he, he doesn't remember that he is Batman, he's, even though he still has the reflexes, the people responsible for the list have come into contact with Bruce they try to kill him Dick is able to wean them off and you just get a lot of surprises in this book not just from the Robins but from Batgirl I'll spoil that for you and also the people the characters that are in that book called I am Robin um, we are Robin but the biggest major twist is trying to figure out Harper is trying to figure out what is up with Cassandra, Cassandra Kane, but also the the other biggest moment in this is finding out that the person that could be responsible, there could be a. I hate to say this, but there could be a traitor out of one of the Robins. I'm not sure I like that. And especially of who it is too but I give them credit they did try something different cyborg number four uh, Walker Watanabe I believe does the artwork on this one uh, I like this monster of the month variant cover pretty cool so Vic the metal men Star Labs is still dealing with the alien cybernetic attack that has been going on. Sorry about that. And it's taken its toll, especially on Silas Stone, a.k.a. Vic, Victor Stone's his father, after he finds out some serious bad news, um, almost similar to, like, it felt this is, issue kind of felt like a little bit of Terminator, but is Vic and the team giving up? Fuck, no, they're not giving up. Uh, but he does realize that, especially Silas uh, realizes that something has to be done to protect his son, as well as Star Labs and the world. And there's just some a lot of key moments that I, I just don't want to spoil. Sorry about that glare. But yeah, Cyborg number four, I very much enjoyed it. Yes, indeed. Let's move on to an, a book that I, one DC book, I, one of few DC books I was always keeping up on. The Flash. Number 45 in the sinister shadow of Zoom. Ben Diddy, Jenkin, Booth. I really wish Booth wasn't doing the artwork here, but the issue leaves us, begins with Flash in the police department along with civilians, including Wally, and Flash knows he has to get them out. The captain is being a dick, as always, and uh, it gets very intense from there. We still, there is still no confrontation between Zoom and and flash yet but it gets to the point that everything that's been going on it gets to the point that even flash even out versus the captain and gets in the captain the captain is being a dick and he's like you know you had to just do it your way your ego blah 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 and it is flash that literally gets in captain's face i saw a moment i took it now get up out of my face and it was just like whoa this was good. The next issue actually has finally the Flash and Zoom meeting for the first time. Good stuff. 
Another book, DC book that I was keeping up with. He-Man, Eternal Wars, number 11, Abinant. Oh my god. Sir, this was great. So, we see that Man at Arms, we get to see Man at Arms this. Uh, and Robert, 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 Roberto, 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 basically does something here that I didn't expect, and Man at Arms comes in contact with the villain um, that has his eye on you, and it was a very intense battle scene, and that was the past. That was, and then it shows the the present, and it. Don't get any more worse than seeing old friends go at it with each other, whether they're under control by somebody, but almost like the words that they are saying is very heartbreaking. Literally, also on the other side of the track, you have Shira and Tila uh, trying to get to Adam. Remember, he's not He Man now; he's Adam, and they run into a certain other female sorceress. It's good to see her. All around, this was a good, good issue, and I can't say too much bad things about this, especially that ending. Oniba from uh, Aspen Comics. This is uh, issue number zero. Oniba, I hope I'm saying it. Oniba. Uh, sword of demons basically it's taking the feudal era of Japan mixing in a lot of supernatural feel to it this individual right here is a samurai who literally has to does something in here that she kind of doesn't like doing but she did it it cost her a lot of things and now she is kind of a ronin a which if you know what a ronin means yeah but little did she knows that there's more to it than that and the artwork in here was really really good I love this cover this cover is badass and she's a badass too you know <laughs> but this was just a, a very standard introductionally introductory uh, issue that gets all the players set so we know who she this, these players are and when they come together we're not like going oh okay who is that um uh, but this was good move on to uh graphic india here's another indie book i was keeping up on um stan lee's chakra the invincible uh, basically what this is is Raju uh, that's his name these characters are Indi Indian which is cool um, you get to see some Indian heroes and heroines in this Raju is basically trying to understand the chakra suit right here uh, how does it work what is needed to activate it and it why won't come off because it is pretty much a part of him and bonded with him and you go through the seven stages of a chakra which allow him to use the various different abilities which was cool but the doctor that is teaching who reminds me of dr dr light is trying to tell him he has to keep he has to keep kind of a low profile he can't be out there showing off and blah blah blah, blah. usual stuff like that and uh, it was fun. The artwork in here is kind of kiddish, uh, similar to a little bit of uh, maybe Mega Man S, but uh, still was fun. And I'm talking about Mega Man the comic. But this was good. Next up, still, still, uh, still in Graphic India, uh, we're going to Shadow Tiger. Number two, Chuck Dixon, Graham Nolan does the artwork. This was good. 
another issue. Uh, very good. Uh, once again, I like this idea of showcasing heroes from other countries more, like I said, in Chakra and uh, Shadow Claw, uh, Shadow Tiger are from India. And we get to see that. And you can, it clearly kind of shows that he's still learning his abilities, but he has the police kind of up his ass, and a dis especially a, an attorney up his ass, and he doesn't know where to go, who to trust, blah, 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 you know, that, that kind of stuff. But he still does, he has a sense of justice, and even if he is kind of a vigilante, he won't let that stop him. I can respect that. This was good. And you talk about really good. TMNT number 51, Christos Waltz. I mean, Christos Waltz. Uh, Waltz Eastman. And the artwork is done by a new guy called, uh, somebody called Garen. It was good. The artwork was good. It felt old school. It felt like old school um, turtles. And basically what this is, is trying to, you know, how are the Turtles and Master Splinter adjusting to the events that happen in issue number 50? And even with new changes, it just kind of shows that it gets really sticky really quick. And... More importantly, not everybody is on the same fence as you. Um, the one thing I will spoil is that Splinter is miserable. He is miserable uh, leading the foot. He doesn't like it, but it's his birding. He's honor bound to do it. And we get to see a good interaction between Michelangelo and Raph. Mikey now is using his grapple hook that he used to use in the old um turtles cartoon later in the later seasons instead of the noon chucks and we also get a new player in town that the turtles have been being watched by a secret organization but other than that uh don't want to spoil too much this was still very good indeed um yeah. Number 51 of TMT. Well, guys, that is all I have this week. I'll be back next week, uh, this week, with some more. Um, expect to see a James Bond comic on there, definitely. Uh, expect to see more stuff from Marvel. Uh, just expect to see me just do what I like to do, as always. Um, but once again, guys, it's been a pleasure. And uh, don't forget to uh, sign up, subscribe to my mentor, uh, my bro, uh, Blue Goblin. And you guys know where you can find me here. Facebook. Twitter. At Mom Brennan Kid. Or Tumblr. The Honorable Warrior. And other than that, guys, you take care, and I will see you guys next time.